Costa, as we said, both Netanyahu and Gantz seem to be happy with this. The Palestinians have rejected it without even hearing what is in the plan. So what does that tell you about the likelihood of this deal of the century actually succeeding? Well, Michelle, first of all, it tells you that the Palestinians have not changed a bit. You know, for over 100 years, there were so many plans presented, which would have been beneficial very much to them. But success, successive Palestinian leadership just betrayed, I think, the trust and the, uh, and the very interests of their own people. Uh, they have always uh, had this um, idea of zero-sum game, all or nothing. Until now, they think of all or nothing. And by all, it means that they want the entire land without a Jewish state. They still uh, continue with this policy. So it will be no surprise to me if they reject it outright. But the difference now, uh, Michel, is first of all, that there is a wide Israeli consensus. Mm -hmm. In the past, the Palestinians always, and, and Arafat was a, was a genius in that, unfortunately, to drive a wedge between Israeli left and Israeli right. And now it will be very, very um, hard for them okay. to do. And also because of Trump's uh, uh, leadership, the Arab countries, which have been privy also to the plan, will be hopefully supportive, or at least not uh, rejecting the plan, which was not the case in the former plans. Well, let's talk about the former plan with Arafat, because of course you're referring to the famous Camp David summit of 2000, yeah. when Ehud Barak practically offered Arafat 90% or more of what Including he was asking dividing for. Including dividing Jerusalem, and he rejected He rejected that and launched the second intifada, a wave of terrorist attacks and right. violent riots. Right. Is Israel concerned that this is what could be expected now, that the Palestinians launch a full-on intifada, more terrorist attacks? They are calling for days of rage tomorrow and on Friday. Do you expect an uptick in violence? Well, we're very much concerned because it's not going to be the first time. We, we see here a pattern that every time after a, they reject a plan, uh, they're pushing with violence, hoping to bring Israel to its knees with accepting some kind of plan that, of course, will be uh, a, a death uh, sentence for, for our country. Um, we don't have to expect. Uh, Abu Mazen Abbas said it in his own right. words that uh, he calls his people for what he says, popular violence or rage days, which is euphemism for terror or a third intifada. Ambassador, you mention the other Arab nations, and that could be the key to all of this, because the Trump administration has been working on an outside-in approach. Jared Kushner has been touring the region, prepping the Saudis, talking mm -hmm. to the Egyptians, trying to get their support. So what do you expect to hear from the Arab leaders when this is announced tomorrow? Well, hopefully they, uh, probably the most they will do is remain mute. Why? Because they are very much intimidated. The Palestinians have been very, very effective in intimidating them by calling on the people and the public opinion against the regimes of these countries, whether it's Saudi Arabia, Egypt, or Jordan, and, and other Sunni countries. However, their national interests are to support the plan. They would like to remove the Palestinian problem out of the equation because it's an existential problem for them because the Palestinians are undermining their own regimes like they did with supporting Saddam Hussein against Kuwait and all the Gulf countries. Also, because of the new situation with Iran, which is right. also an existential threat to all the Sunni countries. Uh, and Israel is a, a real, they understand that Israel is a main ally in supporting them and deflecting the Iranian uh, threat. They know Israel has is not the problem anymore, it's the solution. Ambassador, with these Arab countries potentially saying nothing, that in itself would speak volumes if they don't come out and condemn this. Now, you mentioned this common threat of Iran. Could one of the by effects of this plan actually be pushing Israel and its, some of its Arab nations closer together? That could easily be the case. We, uh, we will have a very interesting uh, call tomorrow when the Arab uh, ambassadors in Washington uh, were invited to the uh, conference uh, announcing the plan. And if they all show up, I think this will be a very good sign. Of course, the Palestinians told them not to show up.